Welcome back. It's Friday and we're ready for part two. And if you've watched part one, you'll notice that I'm wearing the same clothes and I have the same background. That's because I haven't moved. Not in a whole week, but we're just filming these back to back to make my life easier. All right. So last week we talked all about how to become a house sitter um, internationally, be it in Panama or wherever you might be. And we gave a ton of of great tips on how to get started in that journey and what to do once you have made it. So today we're going to look at that from the homeowner's point of view. And like I said last week, I've been both for seven years. I've been both the homeowner who is hiring house sitters and I've been the international house sitter traveling all over the world, staying in people's homes for free. So first thing I'm going to tell you to do, hit subscribe. Second thing I'm going to tell you to do is hit notify because whenever we have a new video come up, normally on Fridays, but we have breaking news quite often, if you click notify, you're going to get a little notification in YouTube whenever we post a new video. Last thing is to click the link below for the I Go Panama Facebook group. We have Selva, quit playing in the leaves. You're making too much noise. <laughs> oh, she loves the leaves. Um, so if you join the I Go Panama Facebook group, we have over 4,000 people there asking questions, answering questions, anything about Panama, be it you already live here, you're thinking about moving here, you're in the process of moving here, you just want to come here and visit and be a tourist, anything goes as long as it's Panama over there. And I really moderate that group well. I make sure we don't let in the snarky, snide, rude keyboard warriors and all that mess you deal with on a lot of expat groups. We keep it real over there. We keep it adult over there. We keep it mature over there. It's a place for learning, not a place for people venting their personal issues and mental disorders. <laughs> okay. Well, unless I'm venting one of mine. All right. So let's get into today's video about being a homeowner. So I started my entire house sitting journey being a homeowner. I talked a little bit about that last week, how I had, uh, Brian and I came to Panama for the very first time uh, and I hired a house sitter because I had a cat. And look, dogs a lot of times don't mind going over to other people's houses or being boarded so much if they have a really good boarding facility. Cats, yeah, not so much. Um, cats really kind of like to be in their own home and it's too stressful to move them most of the time. So house sitting hiring a house sitter is like a win-win you're getting someone to take care of your pets your pets are the priority all of the time that all of that person's attention is on your pets there's not you know 50 dogs in a kennel that you know the attention is spread out between so you know your animal is getting really good attention that if something is is a little off with them the house sitter is going to notice it and probably before someone at a boarding facility would because they're just paying attention to one animal. They're going to know that they're eating and know that they're drinking and know that they're pooping and know that they're peeing and know that they're sleeping and all these different things. And be a comfort to them. Um, again, an animal remaining in its own home after its owner goes, sometimes there's some stress involved for sure, depending upon the animal's personality, but it's a lot less stress on that animal if they're able to stay in their own environment rather than their home, their owner is gone and they're thrown into this new environment they don't know anything about. It's great for your pets, but not just for your pets. It's great for your home too. Um, when you leave your home vacant, you're leaving your home open to all kinds of problems. <laughs> okay. Let's say a pipe breaks. Let's say someone breaks in. Let's say any plethora of problems happens and your home is vacant. You're not going to know about it until you get back. So, I mean, especially here in Panama, like when we leave to go to the States, I'll hire house sitters every time. If you're on trustedhousesitters.com that we'll talk about later and we talked about last week, you'll know when I post this property for house sitters because I, I put it up there. Um, when we go, I can't leave this property vacant. I mean, it's not even like in Los Angeles, if I was going for a week or something and I didn't have a pet, I could leave my house vacant. It'd be fine. But here, you don't leave your property vacant. You just don't. So someone has to be here all of the time. And that's where a house sitter comes in. So protection and companionship for your pets, protection for your home, peace of mind for you, knowing that all of those things are taken care of so you don't have to worry about them when you're on vacation. I'm telling you, I can enjoy my trips because I know that I've hired good people to come in and take care of my property here and my pets. It's worth it to me. 
Okay, so what do I look for when I'm looking for a house sitter? Well, first thing I have to do is create my profile. And again, like I said last week, there's lots of platforms out there. I've tried several of them, uh, including Facebook groups. And the one by far that I have found is the best, hands down, no questions asked, is trustedhousesitters.com. And that's not just because, like, I, look, if you click the referral code, I do get two months free, but I, that's not why I'm doing this, okay? I'm doing this because I think this is an excellent lifestyle and an excellent choice uh, for a lot of people to do, and I want to help you with that. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create your profile on Trusted House Sitters. So there's like all these like questions and not really questions, it's kind of like boxes. So it's like about me, so that's going to be like about the homeowner, about the home, where you're located, what the sitter's responsibilities are, uh, pictures of the pets, pictures of the property, all of those things. And here's what I'm going to say to you as a homeowner. Be as detailed as possible. Do not just put one sentence under each of those things and go about your day. Really let the potential house sitters know what they're getting into. Okay? I have a monster puppy that runs around like crazy, runs off in the jungle, rolls in the mud, falls off the dock like... Do not tell them that you have the most well-behaved dogs on the planet, because I promise you I don't. I have one, but then the other one, I don't. Tell them what they're getting into so they can make a qualified decision. If your dog's needs, or animals, whatever it might be, need special care, like medications, or feedings at certain times, or certain types of foods, or whatever it might be, list that. Not all house sitters are going to be comfortable medicating your animals, okay? If you live in a vegan household and you don't want any meat cooked in your house, put that. Look, the chances are, especially if you have a house in a really cool location, that you're going to have a lot of applicants. So it's best to kind of weed as many out from the beginning. I'll tell you the one big weeding out factor that I have here. I never had when I was in Los Angeles. It's not a a sexist kind of thing at all. I'm a solo female house sitter who has house sat all over the world, but not on a property like this. On a property like this, I want couples. I need two people here, okay? Um, if by chance I can't find two people, then I usually go with a single man, not a single female. I just don't. That's my preference. And as homeowner, guess what? My preference is what matters not what anybody else thinks you're not hiring for apple or johnson and johnson you're not some major corporation you don't have to follow any kind of you know rules about who you hire or who you exclude this is your home be specific i don't want anyone cooking meat in my house i don't want anyone smoking in my house like okay not me i eat meat so i don't care but i don't want anyone smoking in my house anything i don't want anyone smoking on my entire property and i put that in there so nowhere on my entire property, whether you're out at the dock, you're in the house, you're walking around, I don't want cigarettes or marijuana, because it's illegal here, or any of that on my property. I put it in my listing. Okay? Anything like that, you really, really, really need to be detailed. Because look, house sitters don't want to travel to your home and then be surprised by, oh, well, I didn't tell you A, B, C, D, E. Okay? All right, so the next thing I'm going to say is clean your house. Nobody wants to come into a house where the bathroom is filthy and ha the toilet hadn't been cleaned in, you know, six weeks, and there's dirty dishes, and stuff is piled everywhere, and there's no room for them to put any of their own things. Come on. Be respectful. Clear them out of space of their own. I mean, sometimes I've stayed in places that had an extra bedroom, so I had like a guest bedroom to myself. Sometimes it's only been a one-bedroom place, so I've had to stay in the homeowner's room. Clear a space out so that house sitter can make themselves at home, especially if it's a longer-term sit for like a few weeks or more. That's really important. Make sure your kitchen is clean. Make sure the linens are clean. Make sure you explain... You uh, Okay, so here's the next thing. Get your homeowner or your house sitter there about two days before you leave. It's the best thing. And here's why. Especially if you have a lot going on on your property like we do here. You really need to sit down and explain to them step by step by step by step everything that's going on. 
And I highly recommend that you write a very detailed manual about your home as well. Um, so like where the circuit breaker is, where the hot, where the like water turn off is, where the gas turn off is, phone numbers for the vets, phone numbers for the electric company, the gas company, the internet company, the Wi-Fi codes, like all of that stuff. You really need to sit down and take some time to put all of that together. It's really important. You're going to make it easier on your house sitter and you're going to make it easier on yourself because then your house sitter is not having to call you every 10 minutes and take you away from whatever it is you're doing to get questions answered. So if you meet with them a few days ahead of time and then you write it all down in a manual so they can go back and refer to it, it's going to be great. Car or no car. This is another biggie. Some people have left me cars. Some people have not. That is completely up to you. Make sure you check with your insurance and see what kind of effect it might have if someone is, is driving your vehicle. Okay, so check into that. But either way, I mean, especially if you're remote, you might want to leave a car. Like when we're, we're as remote as we are, we have to leave a car because people have to be able to go get diesel for the generator and things like that. Um, so we leave them our truck. Uh, so it, it's up to you, however you want to do that. Um, when you are, well, let me stop the camera and then I'm going to come back and talk about going through the applications and the things you should look for and the things you should watch out for. All right, I had a total brain fart and then I had another one and so now we're back. <laughs> okay, so if your sit is more complicated, you're going to want someone ha who has more reviews and is, has more experience. Sit is simple. Come on, give some of these house sitters out there that are trying to like, you know, get a foot in the game give them a chance okay especially if they've written a really good introduction letter and sound like they'd be a good match and your sit is really short and really simple give them a chance there's some great people out there waiting to get into this this lifestyle and you could be the person who helps them just like the lady in costa rica was the person to help me okay so um you're going through and you're reading you're looking at reviews you're reading those reviews uh you are looking at that introduction level have they addressed the things that you put in your profile? Have they addressed if they're able to give medication to your pets if you said your pet needs medication? Have they called you by your name? Or, or does it look like just a copy paste? Because some of these sitters do that. They just copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. You don't want to copy paste. You don't want to, you don't want a sitter applying for your sit with some generic letter that they're sending to everyone. It needs to be personalized to you, your situation, and your pet, calling your pet by name, okay? So look for someone who's just professional sounding, someone who can communicate well, because it's gonna be important that they're communicating well with you while you're gone, right? Um, especially like if you're gone, that they're answering emails within a, you know, within a decent time frame. They're not going days between answering. Like if you respond to them, they're not waiting days. If somebody doesn't respond to me within like 24 hours, they're off my applicant list. I'm not even messing with it. If you're so uninterested that you can't check your email within 24 hours to see if I've said, yeah, I'd like to talk to you more, forget it. Um, once you have it narrowed down to two or three people that you think would be perfect for your sit, uh, for some people, I recommend you do a video call. For some people, that just gives them kind of that extra peace of mind that they're kind of talking to someone face to face rather than just um, in text and answering questions that way. Perfectly acceptable. I usually don't do that. Sometimes I do as a homeowner, sometimes I don't. As a house sitter, sometimes homeowners have asked me and I've done it and sometimes not. It's really a crapshoot. It's not something that you have to do for sure. Okay, so now um, the other thing is the same thing that I told the house sitters commitment once you click that you accept that house sitter you need to be committed to going through with that okay especially if you have a house sitter who is spending money to in time to travel to you for your sit to cancel on them at the last minute is heinous rude unethical all of these things now again, like I said in the last video, sometimes life happens. Sometimes you broke your leg and you can't go on your trip or your mother died or whatever it might be. Okay, those are major life events that happen. But, you know, um, oh, I got a cold and a headache and I don't really feel like going now or whatever. Or I broke up with my boyfriend and so now we're not going on our trip. Uh -uh. Don't do that to people. 
It's trashy. Don't be a trashy homeowner. Okay, so they come to your home. I recommend that you have them come a couple days ahead of time so you can explain everything to them that you need to explain. And then hand it over. Communicate with them regularly. Some, ho some homeowners ask for pictures of their animals every day, some want something once a week, some don't want to hear from me at all. I mean, that, that's up to you how often you want the sitter to communicate with you and send you pictures and updates. Tell them. Look, this has to be an open exchange of information, all right, all the time. Both parties really need to be open and honest and communicate and commit in order for a house sit to be successful. And I will say that of all of the house sits I've done, like 35 or something like that, I've only had one that was not successful. And that was not successful because the homeowner did not tell me that her dog had serious aggression issues. And I had not been at that sit for more than three or four hours before that dog lunged for my face. And I left. And you know what? I called that homeowner and I said, I am leaving. I am giving you three hours to get back because she was driving. I said, I'm giving you three hours to get back here or find somebody to meet me here because I'm leaving. I'm not staying in this apartment with this dog another second. Okay? Had that homeowner communicated that to me from the beginning, I never would have even thought about applying for that sit. So she put herself in that position of having to cancel her trip. All right? Not me. That was her for not informing me about the truth about her dog because I guess she just either didn't want to admit it to herself or was afraid she'd turn people off. Well, yeah, she would turn people off. So there's a lot to think about, but it's a wonderful exchange when it goes right. And like I said, it goes right the vast majority of the time when both parties are smart, both parties are communicative, and both parties are committed. All right, so that's the end of our house sitting series. If you have any questions about house sitting, please feel free to um, go to the I Go Panama Facebook group and come over there and ask me. I'll answer any question you have about house sitting. Like I said, I've been doing this for seven years, both on the house sitter and the homeowner side. Happy to share information. There's a link. Oh, oh, how much does it cost you? Oops, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, the cost for becoming a homeowner on the Trusted House Sitters platform is $129 a year. And with the discount code that I'm going to post below, which is my referral link, you're going to get 25% off of that. So you're going to get it for less than $100 a year. How much would you pay to board your pet for like three days? Way more than that. So it's very, very cost effective if you travel, especially if you travel a couple times a year. It, it turns out to be quite cost effective. All right, so all that information is down in the video description. If you have any questions, come find me on iGo Panama. Other than that, have a great Friday, and I will see you next week.